Well, it's the 2nd of April, 2022, and I'm about to load up my six new Apame hives with bees. I start out by opening the entrance reducer to just one hole on each side because I want the bees to stay inside and draw out as much comb as possible and also to have a fighting chance at fighting off any other bees that might try to make their way into the hive and rob it. Now I'm starting with hive number two. I've actually already done this process on hive number one, kind of worked out the kinks. So you're going to see me start with hive number two and I'm not going to bore you with doing the video on all of these hives, but we start out by spraying all the frames with sugar syrup, just a little bit. These are Pierco triple waxed frames and I bought the black ones because it's easier to see brood in the black frames when you can look down to the bottom and see the little white eggs and white larva. So we spray a little bit of sugar water on each one of the frames and that will naturally attract the bees onto the frame so that they'll start building comb because none of these frames have any comb on them yet. The queen can't start laying eggs and any foragers won't even have a place to put the um, nectar. So the light colored frames, there's one in each hive and it's larger, larger cells for drone brood. And I learned my lesson the hard way. When you use plastic frames, that are embossed with a particular cell size, the worker bees can only put worker brood onto those plastic frames. And so when it comes time to build some drone comb, they will, <laughs> they will do it wherever they want to. They'll be building comb between frames and on top and underneath and so on. So step number two here is to remove the queen cage out of the package. I don't know why bee companies, queen suppliers and these packages, they, they bolt these queen cages to the package with these heavy industrial strength, heavy duty staples that are just impossible to get out. And I've had some packages come with queen cages that were attached with a kind of a nylon ribbon or something. These actually have a metal strip. So you, you just can't get this queen cage out very easily. Notice that I'm just using my bare hands here. The bees are, they're just kind of in a confused state right now, so they're not defensive. I actually did get stung a couple of times on this particular day when I was doing these six packages, but in every case it was because I grabbed something and there was a bee underneath that I was squashing and it, the bee stung me when I tried to grab it. And um, so I blame myself for those. There was one hit on my arm that I'm not sure how I got that. Maybe I leaned my rest of my arm on something. And I also got hit on my eyelid, so I put on my bee suit with the veil after I finished up that first hive that you see on the far right. So, working on hive number two here. This is the queen cage. Finally got it out off the staple. And then I'll take my pocket knife and I'll just remove the cork that covers the candy on the, on the hole there on the end. And with that cork removed, then the bees can start eating through that little candy stopper there and they can free the queen after about a day or so. And so meanwhile there's a little bit of a screen covering the queen. You always want to check and make sure the queen's alive and she was. I found these really cool holders that um, make it easy to to hang the queen cage onto the frames. Other people will tell you to smash the queen cage into the wax, which I don't have any wax um, comb on these frames, so I can't do that. Other people tell you to take the little metal strip that 
was used to attach the queen cage into the package and wrap that over it. Anyway, I found these cool little holders and I've got a link at the end of this video to the company, Honey Lake Bee Company. And um, it's kind of difficult because it's a very tight fit to get the queen cage into the holder, but once it's in the holder then you just hang it on the frame. And you'll see I've got two frames that will be side by side and I kind of keep those sandwiched together just for the time being while I get all the rest of the stuff all set up. So the next step is to dump the bees into the hive. I no longer soak the bees in sugar water. I used to spray the package down with sugar water because that's what everybody said to do. And then everybody started saying, oh, don't do that. It chills the bees. And why do you want to drown all the bees? So I just do it this way. Yeah, there you end up with a bunch of bees around there, but flying around. And um, now you put the two frames in there gently, make sure that you're not squashing bees. But in these apame hives, the bees end up down at the very bottom, and so they don't get squished. And then these hives have uh, syrup containers. That little thing I'm moving around right now, that plastic strip, is the Broodminder temperature sensor that is a Bluetooth device that will communicate to the little hub and will transmit the temperature inside the hive. These also, these feeders are really cool. They take about 10 cups of syrup and I've mixed this as a one-to-one -one syrup which means 20 pounds of sugar, 20 pounds of water which is two and a half gallons. It makes about four gallons of syrup all total and for six hives that comes out about about right. I actually had some syrup left over. Now on these Apame hives you want to only fill that feeder up to the line. There's a line embossed on it. If you go over that line you are dumping syrup down inside the hive. You won't be able to notice it but that would be a really bad mistake to make. So it just fills up to the little line that's embossed on the plastic and you make sure that the little plastic cover is set for syrup not for cake and then you're all done and you close it all up and come back about a week later unlike the no shake method you haven't left the gigantic gap and you don't have to come back a couple of days later and put frames in there to cover it all up you're basically done and the queen will be released from the cage and she'll be wandering around and the bees will be drawing out comb and preparing the hive for storage of eggs and nectar. And then you just repeat that process for all the hives. We'll do one more here and I'll show you the same process again. We've moved over to hive number three now. The one we just did is to the right. So we'll do this process again. We spray down the frames with sugar water, sugar syrup. take out the two frames that we're going to be putting the queen cells on. This again is the drone frame. You can see the cells are larger. And when you do this, when you use drone frame, the bees will put, will build a drone size honeycomb on that one frame. And the bee, the queen will lay drones into that comb, at least that's the theory. And then you'll end up with a full frame of nothing but drones. And they won't be, the, the bees won't be trying to build comb all over the hive to accommodate the drones. And they'll just be putting it on that drone frame, at least that's the theory. And then you can pull that drone frame out just before they hatch. And you can destroy all the drones and you will be destroying a lot, the majority of the Varroa mite. Uh, eggs that have been laid into the drone comb. Apparently a Varroa mite prefers drone comb 4 to 1 over worker comb and that's because the drones stay in their cells a little bit longer. It gives the Varroa mites a little bit longer time to 
to grow. And so every 28 days, roughly, I will pull out from each hive the drone frame, take it out to my chicken yard and let the chickens have it. And I'll put, I'll rotate a new clean drone frame into the hive. And so then every 28 days, I'll just rotate the drone frames and give my chickens something to eat. This is just the most difficult part of this entire process is getting this stupid can out and getting the queen cage out all at the same time. That one came out pretty easily because I had worked on the little metal strip in advance. It's also really nice this particular year the queen marker dot is yellow which means I'll actually be able to see it. I uh, am red-green colorblind, and so every year when they've got a green or a brown or a red dot, I just cannot find that at all. I just don't see that at all on the queen. So I love the years when it's yellow or white because I can spot that really easily. And so once again, we'll put the queen cage into one of these little frame holders. You'll notice these bees are just kind of walking around on my hand. They're not causing me any problem. I do however recommend wearing a veil just because sometimes they'll go for your eyes and one of them did when I was doing this process on the first hive and got hit on the eyelid. And that's less tolerable than getting stung on your hand or something. These are a very tight fit. They're made to accommodate several different types of queen cages. I've only ever seen this one type, the little wooden cage with the screen stapled over the opening. So you're just basically pressing them in there just to hold it in a particular position with the screen facing downward when you install it on the frame, when you hang it on the frame. The screen will be facing downward, the little candy stopper will be facing the back. And so and we can sandwich that queen cage between these two frames that go pretty much in the middle of the hive. Now in a previous episode I covered the fact that these are seven frame nukes essentially. They're seven frame hives instead of the conventional ten frame and they're all deeps and so I'm even going to be stacking deeps on top of this even for the honey collection because seven deeps is still lighter than ten mediums and so it should be pretty easy to work with. These hives with a complete set of frames and everything only weigh about 30 pounds according to my my broodminder weight monitoring devices. I have in a previous episode 23 or 24 I think 24 you'll see the little scales that I have installed under each one of these six hives that transmits the weight via Bluetooth so I can actually monitor, I can watch the bees leave in the morning and go out foraging, watch them bringing back nectar and packing in nectar and honey and I'll be able to see the weight of the complete hive at any given time just by looking it up on the web. And so once that is all done and the queen is installed there again, then we put the, f the feeders on and fill these with sugar syrup. Yeah, I got stung there. I, I picked something up and it had a bee under it. And it wasn't just a random hit, it was something I did wrong. So I am readily conceding that I made a mistake there and they taught me a little lesson. These feeders are kind of cool because, as you'll notice, the bees, you're not actually accessing anything in the top of the hive when you fill this feeder. And so the bees just come up in the center part and they access the sugar syrup without actually coming out the top. So I'll be able to open the lid on this hive tomorrow and pull off the two little covers on the feeders, refill with syrup 
without ever coming in contact with any bees through that top thing. The only bees that I would encounter would be ones that came out the front entrance. And so, here we've done the next hive. Now for, for right now, you'll see the little round entrances down below the blue and green and yellow. Um, those can be rotated around to allow various types of access for the bees to come in and out. This is the back side of these hives, by the way. I'm working on the back side. But I've closed them all down to just have the little tiny ventilation holes there. I, I want to prevent robbing as much as possible here in this first couple of days till the bees get all situated. And so this is the fourth hive we're looking at here. And we'll just do the same process on it so you'll get a sense of how this is really just kind of a production line process. Once you figure out what works best for you, then it's pretty easy. Start out by spraying sugar syrup on the frames to get the the bees interested. Now I've, I've added a product called Honey Bee Healthy to the sugar syrup and that adds some aromatic oils and I think lemon grass and maybe some other things. So the bees will smell that and uh, and they'll rush in there and hopefully start building comb on all of these frames. I don't spray the outermost frames because they're not going to get around to those for a little while anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much if you spray the outermost frames or not. It's mainly those five in the interior that I want to get the bees building honeycomb on. And so after you've sprayed the frames, then it's time to get the queen cage out. That's the next step. And I use a Leatherman and a hive tool. The hive tool for prying off the staple, the Leatherman for picking up the can. You need something strong that you can grip a tiny little rim of that can of syrup and pull it up. There's the queen cage again. You can see the queen wandering around inside. There will always be bees hanging around on the outside because her pheromone is very strong and they're, they're excited that they've got a queen here that they need to tend to. So you just check to make sure the queen's alive and sometimes they furnish her with a couple of attendants inside the little cage, sometimes not. Put it on the holder. Some people will use a different technique to get that queen cage stuck into one of the frames. If it's got honeycomb on it, you may just be able to kind of squish it into the into the wax and get it to stick there. But these holders are pretty fancy and pretty nice and they're reusable. So the next time I need to do package installation, I'll have some holders available. And just pull the queen cages out. Work for now. We'll just kind of bend that metal out of the way a bit. And then we get the syrup can out. The syrup can is full of syrup with a hole at the bottom that allows them to drink from the bottom from a little hole stoppered with some cloth on whatever travel is involved in this package gives them something nutritious on the trip once you got the little can out then uh, make space there in the middle so that we can dump the bees in and they'll have a place to go you can kind of wrap this wrap this thing on the frame or on the ground or on the box, just pour them in, kind of the way you would 
try to dump your pick out of the guitar if it falls into the hole. You'll just shake it back and forth until you get most of the bees out. I've been putting the empty package on top of the hives once I get everything installed and get the lids put on. And within a matter of a couple of hours, all the bees that are left in those packages will come out and they'll go into their hive, and, or one of the hives. Technically, they will probably go into the one that I've set the package on because that's the pheromone that they're used to now for, for the travel. In my case, it's about a three and a half hour drive from Navasota where I picked up these bees at our weaver company. About three and a half hour drive up to here, and about another half hour before I started installing them. So they had at least that amount of time, plus a little bit of time before that, probably a few hours earlier that day when the packages were all put together. To smell the queen and to know what her pheromone smells like and to get used to it and so on. I have to point out that you'll see me squishing some bees here and there. Um, there's somewhere between three and five thousand bees in a package, so I don't like to squish bees, but sometimes it can't be avoided and sometimes I just don't notice it. So if you lose some bees here and there, might lose 10 or 20 bees just putting all this together. And, and I don't like squishing them, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. These bees that come in the package are a mix of nurse bees and foragers and guards and all kinds of different life cycle places. And so some of them are dying off even as we speak just because they're, they're older bees. And so they give you some in all of the different stages of life so that some will be able to go right out and start foraging for nectar. Some will just be sitting around waiting for the queen to start laying eggs so they can start packing in the jelly. So there we're all done with hive number four. But I do have trays underneath each hive and I've been putting a product called First Saturday Lime. And what happens is as varroa mites and small hive beetles fall to the bottom of the hive, they fall through a screen down into that lime and it kills them. There's what the hives look like, all six all set up and ready to go. And now I'll just kind of leave them alone. They've got a couple of holes open on each one of the hives so they can come in and out. We'll see you next episode.